So this video is going to be an overview of the design decisions you'll need to make if you're interested in building a CNC controller. Um, I think it'll be obvious to people who have already done it, but uh, for those who haven't, uh, it's probably good to provide a summary of what's involved. So the first thing you need to take into account is what is the available AC power in your shop where the CNC is going to run. Um, for most of us here in North America, it's going to be either 120 volt or 240 volt AC. And uh, it's going to vary the number of amps that are available from as low as 15 amps uh, up to, you know, 50 amp, 240 volt. Uh, so it's a big delta uh, as far as what's available. And so it's going to affect your design and affect what's possible. Um, another thing detail is uh, the n number of wires, let's say for your 240 volt service. So you might have, a, like I do, a three wire 240 volt circuit coming to your garage rather than a more modern four wire. And so that'll affect your design as well. So the second thing you'll have to decide is what kind of spindle or router you want to use on your machine. Um, so there's a lot of choice. Uh, you could use a single phase router that runs off 120 volt AC. You could choose like I did to use a three phase spindle, which require a VFD, which is a variable frequency drive, which converts the single phase AC into three phase AC. And then you need to take into account what the horsepower rating of that motor is, regardless of which type and uh, how many, how much amperage that motor will draw. And just be aware that if you do go the VFD route, uh, there's sort of a penalty for converting single phase AC to three phase. So you need a little buffer. You also need to watch out for VFDs. Some, some of the VFDs are not very efficient when they're converting single phase to three phase and there'll be a power factor adjustment and some of them can be as much as 50%. And so they'll give you a rating. Oh, this, this, uh, VFD can put out, uh, you know, 30 amps, but if you're actually converting from single phase, it's half that. So just be aware and careful about that. And so just realize that if you go VFD, you're going to need a little bit more current uh, buffer. So you also need to select which software you're going to run up front. Um, I know it sounds a little, <laughs> a little bit odd, but it's the reality. You need to decide whether you're going to run Mach 3, Mach 4, Linux, CNC, or, or whatever else is out there um, just because it affects the the software and communication between uh, the controller board that you're going to select that leads us to the controller board um, and at least in my research it sort of came down to two major contenders and that's PMDX and ESS with each which is Ethernet smooth stepper uh, those were kind of the only big contenders I was looking at, mostly because they, those manufacturers provided drivers, uh, plugins, uh, to go with Mach 4, and I was interested in using Mach 4. And so, bottom line is, you kind of need to just decide on the software and the controller board, in my opinion, at the same time. You have to sort of pick a combination that's going to work together that other people have used and if you're not you're you're uh, gonna walk that road alone maybe and that's gonna be harder so next up is stepper drivers um, there's essentially two types is analog and digital versions it seems to me that digital is the way to go they seem a lot more efficient um, uh, I think it'll be beyond the scope of this video to discuss that but those are the two options um, it seemed Gecko Drive was an obvious choice to, for me. Um, there are other versions out there. There's lots of uh, these, I think, I can't pick out a particular brand because they seem to almost be like an open source design where a lot of the Chinese manufacturers make the same uh, boards. But anyway, they're, they're out there. Um, and then here, with choosing the stepper driver, you have to just sort of make sure that they're compatible with the controller board you're using. And then my advice, again, would be to go look on the Internet um, to make sure that, you know, it's sort of a proven combination, that your stepper drivers that you want to use kind of work with the board that you've chosen. So then you need to select which stepper motors you want to use. And so it's which, which NEMA size. So there's uh, from very small motors all the way up to these Mongo monsters. Um, and so they 
produce different amounts of torque and uh, take certain amounts of current. Um, so basically you have to size the motor that you need based on your application. Are you woodworking? Are you metalworking? How big is the gantry and how heavy is it? Well, you know, what kind of gear system are you using? All of those things are your choices. But what's important is, uh, you know, what size and ultimately what current uh, your stepper motors are going to need. And then as a side note, um, the, the wiring configuration, there seems like there's quite a few um, pretty common ones. I think four, six, and eight are the most common that I see. Um, I actually have eight wire, and it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility with how you actually wire them together. So that's the reason I chose eight wire. Um, and then, you know, with a four wire, I think they've made they've taken a few decisions away from you. And so anyway, I won't get into the wire numbers, but just know that that's a thing and you have to select which one you want up front. So next up, uh, you have to decide what voltage you're going to run your stepper motors at. Um, so your stepper motors will come with a spec sheet and you can uh, take a look at that and they'll usually give you a, a maximum voltage. But uh, it's sort of an engineering decision about what voltage you select. And so I'll put a link down below to a good article that's on Gecko Drive that uh, talks about this topic. So it's pretty deep. Uh, the sort of the summary of it is that you're you're trying to balance uh, torque, speed, and heat generation of the motor itself. And so let's say I have a motor that can take 80 volts. I don't necessarily want to run it at 80 volts. It'll give me a very high speed uh, motor, which is good, but it'll also probably be pushing the limits of that motor and generating a lot of heat. Um, and so bottom line is I'd read up on the subject and just know that it's something you have to decide up front um, because it, it will affect the DC power supply that you're going to need. So that brings us to the DC power supply. So uh, with the power supplies, you'll need to decide whether you want a switching power supply or a linear one. Um, I think the linear one is best for this application. Uh, the bottom line is as motors, as the stepper motors decelerate, they become generators and actually create voltage that is uh, has to go somewhere. And so the linear power supply is able to absorb that energy back whereas a switching power supply cannot. And so you have to uh, add some additional you know, resistors and, and other techniques to kind of deal with that um, uh, inevitability. And so it's just something to be aware of. It seems like most people who are making these CNC controllers go with these larger linear power supplies, and that's what I did. Um, and then when you're picking out a power supply, you sort of have to look at the wattage. And so there's kind of a wattage calculation based on how many motors you're driving, what is the current of each motor, and et cetera, how many phases. So there's a bit of engineering there. So you kind of need to dig into that to size your DC power supply. And then, of course, the output voltage is sort of what you decided in the previous step with the, the stepper motor voltage. Um, and so all of those just kind of go together so so e-stop design so i think it's probably good for you to think ahead of time about how you're going to design the e-stops of your machine uh, so it's common in industry to have a latching circuit controlling a contactor that controls power to the entire controller board um, and so it usually uses a dc voltage uh, 24 volts or maybe 12 volts dc to drive uh, the contactor, and when you press the e-stop, the contactor is opened, and it kills power to the entire uh, controller board. And so I would, I sort of view that as sort of the gold standard of safety. You hit a button, and everything stops. Basically, there's no, you know, no chance that a bad motherboard would ignore the signal. Things like that. And so the other concept is sort of a soft e-stop, and like. The PMDX424 sort of supports this concept where it's just a signal to the controller board to stop all motion. And so you could view that from a safety standpoint as maybe not as good because something could go wrong with the board itself and it ignores that and keeps running. And so 
either way, uh, it's something to know about and think about. And so my machine actually uses both. Uh, when all of the e-stop buttons on my machine actually control the contactor, and it shuts power off to the entire uh, controller. And then I actually have this separate little button uh, that I use uh, near my control station that I can just hit, and it's actually the soft stop. And it's usually in a situation where I forgot to configure something or I'm just, it's sort of that operator idiot moment where you're like, oops, and you just want to stop the machine, but you don't want to have to kill the power and then reset everything by turning it back on, re-zeroing the machine, loading the, you know, G-code file again. So it's just a lot more convenient for an operator. And so... I'm not going to get into maybe, you know, I, I would imagine Osho wouldn't like those kind of mixing and matching. Usually when you see a red button, you want to have it always be the same behavior. But anyway, I can tell you from operating the machine, I'm glad I have both. But, you know, it's up to you. Uh, you're probably the one that's going to be hurt <laughs> badly by that. Uh, so anyway, do do what you think. But it's good to think about it now at, at this part of the design phase. So I'm going to squeak in one more item here. Um, so this is electromagnetic interference management. Um, this is something that probably would be good to think about now rather than later. Um, I think Clue42 uh, has a really nice video about how one of his VFDs was interfering with all of his uh, uh, video equipment while he was trying to shoot videos and stuff. And so it's kind of a broader issue. So it mostly focuses on the, the variable frequency drive and the stepper drivers themselves. And so both of these items, the, the VFDs usually use IGBTs, uh, insulated gate uh, bipolar transistors, to switch. Uh, so basically it's taking AC, making DC, and then converting it back to AC using these IGBTs. And they switch very quickly uh, to make, uh, you know, simulate this, uh, you know, 60 hertz sine wave of AC. And so this can create a lot of electromagnetic, meh, electromagnetic noise. And so this affects both your machine and it can fit, affect other things in your shop. And worsely, it can prop back propagate through the AC line. So it could affect your neighbor, your, your wife who's trying to work in the office, in the other room, things like that. And so it's just best to at least have a plan up front on how you're going to mitigate it if it uh, it becomes a problem with your design, and then also the stepper motor drivers are essentially doing the same thing. They're 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 using MOSFETs to pulse, and so they're very uh, what I call noisy. And so at least within the controller, you want to keep these noisy circuits far, far as far away as possible from the quiet little circuits, like little sensor circuits that work off five volts and tiny amounts of current and so this is basically it's a thing and you kind of need to think about it up front like for example my vfd manufacturer makes a back plate that is essentially a filter for this uh, high frequency noise and so it protects the power lines from the noise that the vfd will put out and so i just bought it it was an extra 40 dollars, and so i thought it was cheap insurance so Anyway, just know that this is a thing and you're going to have to deal with it in your design maybe at some point. So. so I think that's it for this video. I hope it's useful to people who are thinking about taking on this kind of build. Um, I don't think any of the particular decisions are hard, but it, it does take a considerable amount of time to think through it all before you start ordering parts. If you just start ordering parts, you, you're probably going to have a bad day. But um, anyway, I guess people have different approaches to things. So it's the way I approach the problem. Thanks for watching.